Making money in this day and age is far easier than it's ever been. You can pretty much turn any passion into a full-time job, and that's including photography. Yo, how's it going guys? It's your boy Luciano, bringing you guys back with another one. Today, we're gonna be talking about how you can go full-time with photography. I know this is a huge topic, especially as we come to the end of 2022, about to jump into 2023. I promise if you're watching this in 2023, it's still 100% relevant. The big thing right now is people trying to leave their nine to fives wondering, hey, how can I turn my passion, which is photography, into full time? I feel you on this one 100%. I felt like this a few months ago before I decided to jump into photography full time. I am gonna be breaking down four different photography styles to help you go full time. I'm gonna give you an insight on each and every single one. So in case you're wondering, you have a general idea of, hey, this is how I can make money doing this type of photography. For going full time, we're gonna start off with number two. That's gonna be finding your style. And number one is gonna be liking and subscribing to this video. Just kidding, just kidding, not really. But anyway, with portrait photography, there's a lot of different types of styles and niches that you can really fall into to help you make money and go full time. Some of these styles or niches can be anywhere from family photos, studio portraits, headshots, uh, weddings, Boudoir. There's all sorts of different styles within the portrait niche. Some of the good ways to help you make some money with portrait photography would be reaching out on Instagram. So when I say reaching out is you'd be reaching out to influencers, uh, your friends, your family. The big issue here is that a lot of photographers expect to jump into photography for everybody or people in their circle to know that they're a photographer. But the point here is that nobody will know that you're a photographer unless you tell them, right? And a big part of this falls into being a photographer and pretty much getting the word out there that you have a camera and that you do this type of photography. Right now, some of the people that are paying the highest dollar for portrait photography are gonna be like your Instagram models, your influencers. So reach out to these people. But you may be thinking, well, you know, it might be a little bit hard to reach out to influencers or models. And I'm not talking about influencers at a high scale. I'm talking about models or influencers at the local level. So reach out to these people in your hometown, invite them for some coffee, you know, go grab some coffee, network with them, connect with them, because that's gonna go such a long way. At the end of the day, you can't expect to reach out to these people and say, hey, you want photos? You know, there's no value to that. First of all, you're a stranger. They don't know who you are, right? Get comfortable with them, learn who they are. This is gonna make it a lot easier for you to get the job with them later on down the road. Another good way to help you go full time with portrait photography is offering free shoots. I know that sounds stupid, right? We're trying to make money, but trust me, this will help you build your clientele. If you haven't started making money doing this type of photography, then you have to build a portfolio, build a name for yourself and build some respect so people know who you are and know the work that you're capable of providing to them. So now let's talk about product photography. This is actually a really fun one and one that I started doing when I first got into photography. I feel like this one is a lot more easier to maybe build a full-time job from because a lot of the networking that you're doing or a lot of the outreach that you're doing is gonna be on social media. When I started, I started in the gaming industry. If product photography is your style that you're gonna use into going full-time, then I strongly recommend that you niche down. So stick to that product that you've been shooting and whatever you're known for. You don't wanna go out there and shoot something different that you're not familiar with. So if going full-time is your goal, you're gonna to wanna to stick to something that you know and that people know that you're good at, right? So whether that be, you know, a wallet or an energy drink brand or a water bottle, right? Whatever that might be, stick to that so people know who you are by what you shoot. For example, let's say you've been shooting product photography for a wallet company like Eaksters. As you begin to share all these pictures of wallets on your Instagram page, your portfolio might end up reaching another wallet company, right? This will make it a lot easier for people to scout you out, reach out to you for that type of work because you're already good at it, they already see your portfolio. So there's not much of a concern on their end. So what are things that you can do as a product photographer to help you go full time? So something that I would do or that I've done is message brands on Twitter, message brands on Instagram, reach out to the brands on whatever platform they're smaller. This was one of my tricks that helped me get in contact with brands because let's say, you know, this brand has 100,000 followers on Instagram, but on Twitter, they've got like 2,000. 
they're probably getting a lot more messages on Instagram. So it's going to be a lot harder for them to see your message or respond versus you messaging them on tip on Twitter. They're obviously probably not getting that many messages on there and they're more likely to see you on there. That's a golden nugget for you guys. So use that to your advantage, but I strongly do that. That's something that I was doing that helped me get free products, shoot gaming brand products. You know, like this chair that I'm sitting on from respawn, they actually sent it to me for free because I shot the shot it for them. Another big thing is you're going to want to send emails. It's really going to come down to a huge number game and who, how many emails you're sending out, how many people you're reaching out to. Cause like I mentioned at the beginning, nobody will know that you're a product photographer if people don't know that you're doing it right talk to brand managers talk to partnership managers get in contact with that brand and when you're doing product photography everybody wants to start big right so don't reach out to these huge brands start locally i know i mentioned that for portraits but you can also utilize that for product photography reach out to local mom and pop shops right that have maybe jewelry or chains you know or even t-shirts go off them a shoot at like an unresistible price i still do this to this day even when i'm shooting real estate photography so offer them a price that they're less likely to turn down so that way you get your feet in the door this is how you build relationships and this is how you're going to build your portfolio and also get the chance to network with other people in that niche so then there's real estate photography real estate photography has been my baby this is what helped me go full time as a photographer i was literally able to make over six figures within a few months that's a story for another day so if you guys want to know about that and how i did it just drop a comment i'm more than happy to get into it and help you guys out with real estate photography there's all kinds of different ways that you can make money some of the ways that i've made money in real estate photography has been with architecture photography uh, rental photography even for sale by owners people selling their own house right without a real estate agent shooting for real estate agents there's all kinds of different ways in real estate that you can make money it's crazy because when i first jumped into it i was like cool i'm gonna go shoot some houses for some real estate agents and that's about it but then my phone started going off for rentals airbnbs architectures home builders like it's crazy so what can you do to make money in order to go full-time as a real estate photographer so the cool thing about the real estate industry is that a lot of the real estate agents are very well connected it's like a family it's weird but the one thing that i've noticed is that a lot of my business comes from referral base a good thing about this is that if you're able to provide a quality service and treat people good the word on this is going to spread like wildfire this will lead into you getting more calls and even getting bigger jobs that you did not expect one of the biggest ways that i've found to make money in real estate is by connecting with other agents like i mentioned earlier connecting with people sitting down with people in photography is such a huge deal it doesn't matter what type of photography you're doing but if you can connect with your target client and bring them value show them the quality of the work and the value that you have to bring to them it is strongly going to increase your chances so reach out to real estate agents on instagram or facebook right add them as a friend uh, if you think about it real estate agents are more than likely to add you as a friend on facebook because they might think that you're a potential client but when they accept your friend request if you end up messaging them and letting them know hey i'm a real estate photographer in your area i'd definitely like to sit down and talk to you maybe offer you some sort of deal for me to have a chance to shoot something for you or have a chance at showing you some of my work that right there has been super powerful for me and i've been able to leverage in order to talk to other people in the industry that have led me into way bigger jobs such as commercial photography because if you think about it right you have real estate agents that are sharing your work all over the internet because they have to get these houses sold right so they're also connected with their peers which is other real estate photographers so they get to see your work as well so it doesn't take much for somebody to see that work and be like hey this is some really good photography who shot this and for that agent to be like hey you know luciano shot that or brian shot that whatever your name is right the, he shot that so reach out to him here's his number blah 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 and now you know later down the road you have somebody calling you because you just got a referral from that first agent you just shot a house for probably making it seem a lot easier than it is but if you don't take action you know and you don't go out there and tell people what you're doing and who you are you're less likely to have people give you their business because you can't just sit down and expect people to you know call you without people knowing who you are so yeah real estate photography is a really great one now let's jump into the last topic which is going to be food photography uh this is a very hard one for me because if i shoot food photography i always end up getting hungry and probably eating the food so <laughs> for those of you guys that are in food photography and can resist not eating the food make sure you 
jealous of you guys, but this is an extremely good way to go full time as a photographer and doing something that you really enjoy. If you think about it, food is probably like one of the biggest things that's shared on social media. If you go on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is, right, you're always gonna see some sort of content or picture revolving around food. There's a lot of brick and mortar restaurants out there locally. There's a lot of coffee shops. If you think about it, there's a coffee shop probably on every single block of the city. It's kind of weird, you know, they just ended up popping up out of nowhere. Local shops are gonna be your big money maker here. Walk into these donut shops, these coffee shops, and offer them photography for their food. Um, you can really leverage this kind of stuff because if you think about it, a lot of this food ends up getting shared, like I said, on social media. So if you can provide them a very valuable product this can lead them to getting a lot more clients in through the door because of their photography man you know you're gonna have a huge success i don't want to make it seem like you're a salesman but at the end of the day you are a business owner and you should know the value of the product that you're providing to your client food is always going to sell but there's always ways to make that product stand out with photography. For example, if you take two pictures, right? One is really bad and just looks very sloppy. You can't really make out the ingredients that are on the picture. You can barely tell it's a hamburger, right? If that gets posted on Instagram, that's probably not gonna get as much love versus if you were going there, you're a professional food photographer, right? And you take this picture, you end up killing it, and you make this picture end up looking like a McDonald's commercial, and this ends up getting shared on, on their Instagram, that's more likely to end up getting a lot more engagement. Obviously because of the quality, it looks good. People sitting behind the screen are gonna end up getting hungry and possibly end up going to this restaurant because it looks so delicious. So if you can bring that type of value to your client, that is a huge, huge W in my book for you. So walk into those businesses, go connect with these business owners, let them know you know what value you got to bring and also provide them free shoots or provide them shoots at an unresistible price so that way you can get your feet in the door. That's super critical into growing your business. I've been in business for a year now and I'm still offering free shoots or offering unresistible prices in order to gain more clients to show them the value that I have to offer to them. It doesn't matter if you're not confident in your work. There won't be anybody else to inspire that confidence but yourself and this baby right here. With practice comes perfect, and in the world of photography, there's opportunity and practice all around you. Take advantage of that.